very variable in the United States. So I'd like to speak with you about corneal tissue reimbursement in the United States this morning. I'd like to acknowledge the help of the iBank Association of America in preparing this um, talk. So the iBank Association of America, as many of you know, was founded in uh, 1961. 100% of the U.S. iBanks are members. There are now only 83 U.S. members. Um, in the United States, 77,582 corneas were placed for transplant in 2017, almost 51,000 in the United States, and as Diego said, uh, 26.6 thousand were exported internationally as we have a surplus of tissue at this time. So basically in the United States we have three forms of insurance models. It's much different than here where you have the government and private. Uh, we have Medicare, which is government-administered health care coverage for individuals over 65 years of age, which is 44.5 million uh, Americans are insured. Medicare Advantage, which is Medicare coverage for these patients over 65, that's administered by private companies that accounts for 19 million insured, and private insurance, which is paid for mostly by employers, or about 12% is paid just by the individuals, and this is more common with what we called Obamacare, or the insurance exchanges, and this accounts for 179 million lives that are insured. If we look at the cornea recipients by age, taking into account that Medicare and Medicare Advantage addresses patients 65 years and over, you can see approximately 75% of corneal recipients are in the 65 years and older age group category, with a second category being approximately 20% in the 40 to 64 year old age group. And the interesting thing is that the prevalence of the insurance models based on the population of the United States is the exact opposite. With 75% being privately insured, Medicare accounting for close to 20%, and the rest being Medicare Advantage, which is privately administered Medicare insurance for patients over 65 years of age. The Medicare policy was set in August 2007. That's when the final rule was established that corneal tissue is to be paid at the iBank's direct cost to recover, process, and deliver tissue. And that policy is what we call a pass-through. For the Medicare patients, it goes straight to the government. The typical reimbursement is between 3,000 and 3,500 uh, US dollars, not that much higher than the euros. I guess it depends on the conversion factor, which now is quite low. This allows for no profit margin, but it does include the cost for unsuitable tissue, eye bank offices, equipment, reserves, recovery, tissue that's recovered and tested to be unusable, testing, etc. So the challenges to the policy become very complicated. For example, in Medicare Advantage, the insurers negotiate with each hospital for bundled payments that include all costs of a procedure in a single amount, somewhat akin to the DRG as described by uh, Diego. So the doctors, hospitals, and other providers basically argue or haggle for their portion of the payment. Hospitals often focus on the reimbursement for high volume procedures such as cataracts rather than corneal transplants because proportionately it's more than 10 to 1. And if a payment for a transplant is low, they then can ask the eye bank to absorb the loss. So eye banks in the U.S. are very busy educating the hospitals before they sign contracts. And this 
is a huge challenge. Private insurance can become even more complicated. Traditionally, it was reimbursed at the same level as Medicare with a full cost coverage because Medicare traditionally reimbursed at lower rates than private insurance. But the insurance companies are now very much trying to limit their expense. They will shop around for different eye banks willing to accept lower payments in exchange for use of their tissue. And now some eye banks are going directly to the private insurers and we have extreme competition in the marketplace in the United States. This becomes even more, let me go back and say, this becomes even more complicated when the surgery is done in an ambulatory surgery center because an ambulatory surgery center usually is looking at the um, most commonly done procedures such as cataracts. So if they do 10,000 cataracts, for 200 corneas, they're very focused on negotiating the fee for the cataracts and in turn the insurance companies are very smart and they will carve out the coverage of the corneal tissue. So if you don't read the fine print in the contract when the ambulatory surgery center negotiates with the insurer, it could be that they say basically we'll cover the surgery but not the tissue. So what's the benefit of corneal transplantation to the U.S. economy? And this is very important, I think, for all of us who are involved in this field. The EBAA calculated the value of corneal transplants. They included the costs of all aspects of the procedure, the tissue, the physician, the facility fees. And they also calculated the um, benefits in three different categories, uh, reduced medical medical expenses to the recipients, increased income from returning to work, and increased taxes paid to the government from returning to work minus the disability payments that are paid to the individuals who cannot work from their vision loss. So corneal transplants performed each year deliver approximately six billion dollars of benefit to the U.S. economy. And this uh, study was not done by the iBank Association of America, but by the Lewin Group, which is a uh, organization that does this in a non-biased manner. So I think it is very complicated in the United States and is becoming even more complicated um, in how we pay for tissue because you know we have 30 million uninsured in the United States. It is illegal in most contracts to uh, transfer the cost which is not covered by the insurance company to the patient. We cannot do what is done outside the United States of private surgery where I might say to you, oh, Enzo, I'll do your surgery, it will cost you $15,000 for the surgery and another $3,000 for your cornea. So we're in a great time of transition in the United States and unfortunately our um, innovation in tissue preparation is going very fast and that's very good for the surgeons and it's very good for the patients but it's not very good for the recovery of the costs. For example, if you negotiated based on 2017 prices to get your tissue for $3,500, and then you go to a meeting in January or February, you go to Citrac, you go to some meeting and you say, oh, this preloaded tissue in this goiter or this modified Jones tube is so great, I will save five minutes in the operating room. And then you say to your hospital, I want the preloaded tissue. Well, the preloaded tissue is maybe $500 more. The hospital may or may not recognize this, 
it may take a lag of more than 180 days in the U.S. because once the bill is submitted, Medicare has 180 days to pay you. And then maybe 30, maybe 90 more days for them to recognize, oh, wait a minute, we lost $500 per transplant when it was preloaded tissue. So it's a very complicated system with many challenges. Thank you so much. Thank you to you.